happening. No one's here just yet, so let's... Okay, I might start making my little antennas. <laughs> Yeah, really easy to work with actually. They don't work great as a support wire though. They're more of a decorative mm. wire really. Right, we've got a few people watching, so let's get rolling, Beth. Excellent. All right, just make a some antennas. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today on our Friday live stream. I have a quick apology to make. I'm sorry we were a little bit late today. I was actually busy working with some absolutely delightful ladies um, on organising a funeral, sadly, for next week. So, yeah, my apologies for being on the drag, but better here, better late than never. Hey, Laura. Yeah, <laughs> so, just to introduce ourselves, today you're actually not going to see an awful lot of me, which is probably a bit of a blessing in some respects. Um, I'm going to be creating this fantastic um, butterfly arrangement suitable for a celebration or perhaps for a tribute or something like that um, and Laura's going to be working behind the camera again you won't see her but just in case you hear disembodied voices it's Laura behind the camera and it's me doing the arrangement I'm Debbie so thank you so much for joining us I hope you enjoy please do pose any questions don't forget to like us share us with your friends um, and also keep looking at our YouTube um, YouTube channel which has got lots and lots of tips and hints and different videos educational inspirational and just generally for the fun of it aren't they Laura <laughs> so yes keep an eye on that so today we're going to use we've got quite an array of flowers here actually we didn't create a specific um, shopping list today or a, a, an ingredients list today because we were kind of waiting to see what a nice array of flowers that we had um, available in our in our stock room today. So we've actually got some beautiful hydrangeas, got some feeling green chrysanthemum, actually that's code, that chrysanthemum. We've got some interesting, but not everybody's favourite, digit. <laughs> love it. It's one of those marmite flowers, isn't it, um, Laura? Some people love it, some people hate it. We've got some Limonium Mr. Silver Pink here. That's rather nice. Pink Carnations, some Dark Blue Status. Um, now, roses in there. We've got um, Nightingale, and I think that one looks like... You've got um, Dolomiti, and you've also got Memory Lane. Oh, okay. So it's not nightingale. They can't see them at the moment, but they will see okay. them later on. Okay, and then we've got some lovely purple um, alliums, and this chrysanthemum, which I think is this penny lane? Not sure. I don't know. Don't know which one that one is. Anyway, I'm going to make a start by creating the body of the butterfly. I'm using a smaller butterfly frame here. Um, these are all obviously available on our website. Now the lovely thing about this frame is it's actually all marked out in sections and shapes. So it does help with the design. So I'm just going to cut the chrysanthemums first. Now these chrysanthemums have actually been conditioned for a while. So they're nice and full and perfect to create that rounded kind of body. Now I'm cutting everything off in one go, but in my mind I'm going to actually separate the slightly smaller blooms, such as that, from the larger. Because then you can use the smaller ones to create the slightly more detailed parts of the body and the larger ones for the main part. Okay, so as I said, do feel able to ask any questions that you have and we'd be delighted to answer them for you. So just to do a quick shout out, we've got some lovely ladies watching us today. We've got um, Pam, Michaela, Michelle, Julie, all of our top fans. They say hello ladies. Hi there. Michelle, um, she says that it's wet in Wales, uh, so not very good for you there. We've got Keith watching from Ireland. He says he's doing, uh, doing wedding flowers at the moment. Oh, excellent. Um, 
Michaela, it's pouring down in London as well. Charlie, Rachel, Deborah. Oh, got a lovely look. That's a lovely look. Oh, we've got today. a nice group of people today. Well, I think it's raining everywhere, but actually, Laura in Scotland, it's sunny up there. Lovely Laura's back again. Hi, Laura. Actually, quite lucky. Normally, Scotland seems to get a rough end yeah, of the deal with the yeah. weather, so you were able to say no, 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 no today, Laura. Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, nice to know other people are working as well at the same time. So, uh, yeah, we, we had a wedding here this morning, so it's all, it's all been full on this morning. And it's just Friday as well. It tends to be quite a busy day, orders mainly. Yeah, and normally we get all of our wedding work done on Fridays, ready for Saturdays. So, yeah, Friday's a busy, busy day for us. So we've got two Michelles. We've got Sh Michelle Roberts, who says fabulous, and we've got Sh Michelle Fillery from Ipswich. Oh, close at hand, <laughs> local person. Okay, so just starting to create that body. Now, if you can see, I'm actually putting the stems in at a slight angle. So that's so we create that three dimensional effect. Oops, sorry, I've just pinged off my, let's try that again. <laughs> right, hopefully you can still all still hear me. <laughs> Decided to get rid of the um, microphone there for some weird reason. Now, as you can see, keeping that nice curvature to the body. So just simply placing it in at an angle? Absolutely, in at an angle. Yep, as simple as that. And then the little gaps, just filling in with some of the slightly more rounded blooms, slightly larger ones I'm using here. Keeping it quite nice and neat. I've literally just used three stems so far. So not particularly Um, not particularly demanding on stem count. And then as we get to the base of the body, I'm just going to swing this round, so hopefully you can still see okay. Swing this round just to do this end. Hopefully in exactly the same position as it was before, so you can still see. And just cut a few more of the blooms off. and just pop those in. As I say, I'm using the slightly smaller ones here just to create the finer details at the bottom. And obviously once you remove the croissants from the stem, you can grade them according to what you need. So I've been abandoned by my work colleagues today. Jenna's just gone and left me. Oh. So I'm in here on my own. <laughs> well, we got Cherie from Barnsley. She's watching now. Hi, Cherie. Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, how did your um, dad's birthday go? Because I know you made some lovely bouquets that she sent over oh, the yeah, that's, of. that's right. They yeah, were lovely. There were some flowers that. in that certainly brightened up the room. Um, I wonder how it went. So there we have the body of the... Cool. We've got lots of people watching us. Butterfly. We've got 57 people watching Debs. Wow, oh, must be a popular one. What is it? 20 past 12? That's a record, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really nice. Thank you for joining us. So just swing him back or her. Yeah. Just so you can see how the body's been formed. And now I'm going to start on the wings. Is that still quite central? Yeah. 
Good, good, good. I don't want to lose anybody. <laughs> so as you can see, the it's, it's almost without sounding derogatory, it's almost a little bit like paint by numbers because you've kind of got your design mm. on there already. So you just need to pop the flowers into position. So I'm going to start with trusty carnation. Oops, a little bit shorter than that maybe. And Look keeping a balance. Mm -hmm. I would like, from my point of view, just because I don't tend to do floristry, you've got that real deep, like part beneath the carnation, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the calyx. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Does that ever? Because you obviously can't put the carnation in flat to the tribute. You'll always get that bit underneath. Yeah. Um, so if you want to reduce the size, what you can do is be really cruel. And pull all that off. See, very cruel, I suppose. And then you can actually wire that if you want to. I haven't actually got a wire to hand. I'll use this for now just to, to give you an example. So you can actually pop the wire around it so it's shorter. Right. Then cut yeah. that length off. Okay, be low enough now. Oh, no, let me do that again, <laughs> using the wrong wire. Suffice to say, you can remove that as I showed you. You can then wire um, the petals, cut this piece off, and then pop it in as a wired bloom. It's not ideal, it's not going to have a long shelf life, but that does help to reduce oh, okay. so the length. Tribute or something. Yeah, you could do that. And plus the fact you can feather them. So if for some reason you've forgotten to order spray carnations and you need them for a corsage you can always just pull off some of the petals wire those i think we've got a, a video of us doing that um from a previous occasion haven't we yes um feathering them so yeah you can you can reduce the size so moving on to they're lovely these Do have a slight fragrance though. <laughs> yeah, that is the so. only thing. They they uh, they're part of the Allium family, so naturally they do have a a slight reminiscent smell of onions. <laughs> absolutely. To be fair, people absolutely love them for their colour mainly because they've got that really nice cadbury colour. Uh, but yeah, something to be aware of. Um, yeah, especially if it's a hot day, especially for weddings and things like that. Yeah, if you've got if you've got those in a marquee, you're kind of going to know about it, to be honest with you. If you're doing a rustic kind of that style of event, put onions on the barbecue, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just um, creating part of the shapes in the wings. So with the, the oh, roses oops. specifically for um, this, are you removing the guard petals from the roses or are you going to keep them on? I'm actually leaving them on on this occasion. Um, Just because personal preference or? Yeah, um, I kind of think they look a bit more rustic. Um, look a bit more natural if you remove all the guard it does it lo you do get to be fair you do get a neater look if you do remove them but I am leaving them on on this occasion just because I quite like the colors actually the, you've got a slightly different color tone on the uh, edge of the petal and actually helps to bring all the colors together so you've just got a question about the roses, um, so the varieties um, that you've got there. Mm -hmm. So if you can just highlight which, which one's which. Okay. Probably on the display. Okay, I'm just trying to get my last one in. So we have... I thought this one was Nightingale, but you said it's not Nightingale, didn't you? Fifth Avenue. Oh, Fifth Avenue. So we've got Fifth Avenue, which is this really pale one. And that one looks like... Really? 
Oh, dollar meaty. Okay, shows what I know. Dollar meaty and Fifth Avenue are the two Morphy roses that I'm some using. Ah, oh, you see now that's memory lane. Yeah, that's memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, looking at it and thinking. <laughs> oh, sorry. So we've got Dollar Meaty, Memory Lane, and Fifth Avenue. Yeah. That <laughs> makes more sense. <laughs> I thought this doesn't look like what I remember as being. Okay, so just grabbing one more of those out. So I've made like a kind of a little circle here with the roses either side shot those bits and then we've got some more roses to use further on sorry about that noise everybody that's me chucking my rubbish into a bin I am being tidy so I get marks for that <laughs> and then we're going to use some more carnations now I put the carnations in at an angle against the body just so it helps just to redefine that three-dimensional effect it's going to create that line going around that way now you can see the carnations are quite fresh and they've not been in very long so they're still in quite tight bud you want to make them look a bit more aesthetically pleasing just nip the calyx and fluff them it's not detrimental to their longevity they do look a whole lot better you can see the difference so again you just nip the calyx and fluff and if you can, nip and fluff. Nip and fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some weird exercise you should do. Come on now, ladies, let's do the nip and fluff. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> okay, so just building up that shape with these carnations and trying to keep an even balance either side so you've got um, symmetry okay just get rid of my stems again this side and then we've got what do I need to go down there so okay now I'm just going to do a quick swing round just so I can do a little bit more work on this end. Hopefully I'm in still in position. Am I okay there, Laura? Can people yeah, still see fine. what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to pinch these chrysanthemums from here and pop those in. Thank you. And then I'm going to add those at the base of the wings. So, they're very quiet, our viewers, again today. They are. No questions. <laughs> no, we've just got people saying that they haven't attempted one before, so they'd love to do it, some maybe in the summer break. Um, we've got James who joined us. She says, looking forward to this one. Uh, we've just got lots of ladies saying the weather. <laughs> oh, that's my got, fault. I'm always asking always what the weather's asking. like. <laughs> well, we've got some fantastic viewers today. Excellent. All from everywhere as well. Well, I guess a butterfly is a really nice tribute or celebration um, piece to create, really, because butterflies, I guess, symbolise change. So, you know, it's and new beginnings and, met, you know, metamorphosis and all the rest of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess a butterfly is something, I think, quite inspirational to do, really. And also the lovely bright colours. You can use a nice mix selection of flowers and textures. So, yeah. Julie says, how else did you use one of these arrangements? So, um, 
What a, a po a, other than a sympathy? Other than a funeral tribute, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess really with it with it being sort of a butterfly, you kind of think of meadows and gardens and things like that, don't you think? So perhaps you could use it to to symbolise. I don't know, a, a, an outdoor party, perhaps? Mm, yeah. Uh, you could or suspend it. corporate, if it's linked in, you could do it at an event. There's so many, yeah, so many they, things that you could probably do. And you could suspend it as well. I mean, you could do it all in gypsophila and some little roses and suspend it at a wedding, even. There's, there's no reason why it has mm. to be a funeral piece. Not really. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, if you, if you did it in the sort of colour tones of, of a wedding that you're doing, because we do um, letters quite often, don't we, with uh, letters, in chip. Letters, hearts, don't they? And yeah, absolutely. So what, you get those um, almost like door wreaths that people do as well. Yeah, so why not do a butterfly for a change? Um, as I say, butterfly symbolising change, new beginnings, quite appropriate for a wedding. <laughs> and we've got someone saying is there a particular like format that you're following in what you're doing or no <laughs> not really no i'm any just rule to what you're just doing? making it up as i'm going along mm -hmm. i wouldn't say that there's a rule per se what i would say i am doing though is i am doing a balance so what i'm what i i'm creating one side i'm mirror imaging on the other just so that um you, you get that symmetry. It's butterflies, well, I guess nobody has perfect symmetry, but butterfly wings do tend to replicate or balance each other, don't they, mm -hmm. um, colour-wise? So, yeah, that's why I'm doing that. Uh, but, no, as far as having done a work plan, as it were, to, to do the design, afraid not. Not that technical today, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got Michelle asking, would this go on a stand? Yep, you could put it on a stand, certainly. Yep. Yeah, we do sell stands on our website as well. So, uh, we've got Laura asking, if making a funeral trip, oh, if making for a funeral piece, which flowers would you avoid using, if any? Um, you, usually after sort of consultation with the family you can normally gauge whether there's a specific variety of flower that the deceased perhaps was very fond of or perhaps there's a sentimental reason why they loved a particular type of flower so normally try to include that you might also find that the deceased perhaps didn't like something specific or didn't like a particular color so i would probably avoid doing that but that's more sort of client driven really rather than um variety directed um, it's not really a flower you can't use to be honest with you or I can't think of one at the moment um, probably wouldn't use anything that's not entirely happy in Oasis but most flowers are really so no I can't think of any reason why you wouldn't use anything specifically would you more say so sorry um, in regards to those comments so would you say, so you mentioned about softer flowers, would you say avoid something like a sweet pea or um, those um, softer flowers that lily the valley or things like that? Yeah, I mean, yes, um, I would avoid them from the point of view that they don't last very well, they haven't got very good shelf life. But to be honest with you, if it is for a funeral tribute and it's literally got to be in position for a day or be, you know, um, then something soft it's not too much of an issue and it might well be that the deceased had a favorite flower that was lily of the valley mm -hmm. in which case you try to accommodate something that's unique to that person um, let's face it at the end of the day you only get one chance at getting that right so if you can make it as special for that person as you possibly can then we owe it to them to do that really that's don't you think yeah. so yeah Okay, not sure if that's answered our question or not. <laughs> I anyway, so. I've tried. <laughs> okay. Well, what have you added at the moment, Dad? All right, so I've just added, oh, if I turn him up on the top of his wings or hers, I've just added some Limonium Mr. Silver Pink there 
just as a line underneath the carnations. And then I'm going to add, there's my little roses, I had some roses here. I'm just going to do the same around here as well. So I'm cutting the limonium into little tiny sections. As you can hear, the sound of my scissors snipping. And then I'm just going to do a very similar line around the bottom of the chrysanthemums. Oops, cut that one a bit shorter. And as I said earlier, just to create the symmetry, I'm going to do exactly the same the other side. Rather nice that lemonium. Mm, it is lovely actually. Quite nice and chunky. <laughs> it's quite a pretty colour as well. And it doesn't doesn't appear to have that really strong lemonium smell that some of it has. You know, some sometimes the um, misty lemonium can be quite quite strongly fragranced. A little bit like gypsophila really. Mm. Okay, so just popping those last few bits in there. So again, you can see we've got that balance following through. And just to finish that tiny little bit in the middle there, I'm going to use these really scrummy hydrangeas. Seems very cruel, doesn't it, to cut them so short. Mm. So just explain what you've done there. Debs in regards to the hydrangea, what do you normally say it looks like? Or these? Oh yes, yeah. so <laughs> I had to try and describe some hydrangea to a customer on the phone a little while ago who, who weren't aware of what hydrangeas were. So I, I kind of described it as almost like a piece of broccoli underneath that you can break off. You imagine these are the little pieces of broccoli. It's exactly the same thing. Well, principle wise it is <laughs> so that's what I've done I've literally just pulled those little florets off and then I'm cutting them into slightly smaller pieces so that they're more manageable into the butterfly so as you can see one goes a really long way and can be really cost effective so a hydrangea happy in oasis not for long periods of time no um, you need to keep them well watered. Hydrangea are quite unique in the respect they love water. So if you are placing them into oasis, I'd strongly recommend that you do mist them, keep the heads nice and wet. And that just helps to give them that extra fighting chance of survival. <laughs> so again, just following the balance through and doing the same on the other side. We've got Julie who says, it's very therapeutic watching you create. I love working on designs. Oh, thank you, Julie. <laughs> it's actually quite therapeutic doing it sometimes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I know that we haven't actually specifically designed this in view of it being for a funeral tribute, but I do rather enjoy doing funeral work. And we've focused so much recently on wedding work, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But I think funeral work, it's the last thing that a family ever does for their loved one or the last they ask a florist to do it on their behalf it's a huge um, yeah so very satisfying funeral work sounds a bit weird doesn't it but <laughs> so just repeating the same principle with the hydrangea just c creating the top part of the wings which I don't actually think you can see very well from where you are can you or can you see that Laura it's okay. yeah you can excellent okay. I'm just going around the outside of the wings oops tangled up with my just cutting some more pieces off there we go. 
It's a lovely colour, this hydrangea. Was this... This wasn't Maclema, this one, was it? It doesn't look like Maclema, actually. No, it's a magical pearl, I believe. Magical pearl. Yeah, it's a pearl. Magical pearl. Mm, it's very nice. I love the pink hint and the green. Works beautifully with pinks and purples, doesn't it? Mm. Excuse me, itchy nose. <laughs> I'm actually going to follow the line of the hydrangea all the way around the outside of the wing. Now you can see by the way that I'm pushing the stems in, that I'm pushing them in quite a long way so they get maximum moisture. would you spray them when they're in the tribute? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. If you did spray them, would you spray the other flowers? Would that be detrimental to the other flowers? No, not at all. Um, only thing I wouldn't spray is orchids, really, because um, sometimes orchids will watermark quite badly. Uh, but no, everything that I've got here, having a quick look, no, there's nothing here that can't be sprayed. Yeah. Just keeps it full, fully hydrated. It does, yeah. And, and as I was saying, just to go back to what I was saying about hydrangeas earlier, they drink from the heads as well as the stems. So by giving them a little extra moisture through the heads, it just helps to keep them going that little bit longer. Gives them that little bit of a fighting chance, as I said. <laughs> you see how we're gradually building up the shape of the, the butterfly. Whoops, try that again. I do love these hydrangeas and the colour mix. They're quite, even some of the stems are pink. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm now cutting my third bloom. So as, as I was saying, really cost effective. We've got Michaela who asked, would you just use water to spray or would you use any of the like, glory or flower food? You, you certainly can. Personally, I tend to stick with water, um, but you can certainly, you can certainly use um, the finishing touch um, sprays. Um, they're always going to help because they help seal the moisture in so yeah ev everything you can possibly do to help maintain the longevity has got to be worth and worth the effort <laughs> right. it is also as with everything with flowers um, it is all in the conditioning providing they're conditioned properly and correctly in the first place then uh, you know, they should. You should get maximum life out of them. Changing the water every day is probably the best thing you can possibly do. Flower food obviously helps. It helps to develop. Uh, helps the flowers to develop. So, yeah, absolutely everything you can employ to help is all good. <laughs> Right, so just to show you how I've gone around the outside of the butterfly there. There you can see. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to bring in some more pieces just in between here, in between the carnation and the roses, just to keep that continuity going. used um, hydrangeas in the past for basing actually uh, when somebody's wanted a blue base rather than using um, artificially coloured so sprayed flowers I've actually used blue hydrangea for basing 
you can see how it gives the overall impression now. It does, you didn't get quite such a smooth finish as you would do with chrysanthemums, but you do get a natural colour, so which is often quite important to people. So, right, so I'm just going to pop my alliums in the corner just to emphasize the tips of the wings such lovely color those alliums mm. just following the excuse give me itchy nose <laughs> just following the shape all the way around to reinforce that and this side as well right. and I have two left so I'm just going to pop one in this side and one in this side of my roses so it almost gives you an eye I'm just going to pop another carnation in there we go then I have my blue status whoops it's in that vase nice and tightly <laughs> now I'm just going to highlight the edges of the wings with them um, with some status so exactly the same principle as the limonium so cutting really tiny pieces off and such a lovely vibrant color this is really nice status as well obviously good season for status so where the wings join the body again I'm going to start by putting status in at an angle both sides and then gradually build up that little line of status to give that edge to the wing and then that actually reinforces the purple colouring and the edges of the wing. I just tip that up so you can just see. Okay. And then just repeat. So we've gone, not exactly gone monochromatic here, but you've, we've gone from the pale lilacs, pinks, pale lilacs into the blues, purples, tone of green into it as well. So quite a nice colour mix, I would say. Just following round that little circle. Where the carnation is. And just finishing that, finishing that edge of purple just there. And I'm just going to. We can only just put the under can be used for artificial, right? What does that mean? The under? The under. What do you mean, Michaela? The under. Do the stat use for artificial? I'm not 
sure what Kayla means by that. <laughs> Sorry, Michaela, you might have to just... Um, thank you. The other side. So you might have to run that question by me again, sorry. Okay. Perhaps we'll have a look back on this later, Michelle, and see if we can actually decipher what you mean and then get back to you. Is that all right, Law? Yeah. Yeah. So just filling that little piece in with yet more of our lovely hydrangea. Oh, she means the um, other side of the oasis. Oh, sorry. The back of the oasis. Yeah. Can you use it for dry? Um, I would struggle, I reckon you'd probably struggle to get anything pierced into it because it's really hard foam. But what, what you could actually do if you wanted to was glue stuff onto it. The problem is though, that would then mean that the dried part would be at the base then and it crumbles and it's absolutely awful if you get it in your eye. So not not entirely sure about that one. I suppose if you use up the if you remove it or you Yeah you could take it. yeah you could take what's supposed to be the wet foam part off, I guess, and then use it. You've definitely got that fantastic shape there. So yeah. Yeah, you could use it for artificial. I'd, as I say, though, I'd probably glue onto it rather than trying to push stems into it. There we go. Now I'm going to turn that round now. Ha ha ha. Gosh, it's quite heavy. <laughs> Is that still in good position to see? Mm -hmm. Oops. And I've just pushed that poor little chrysanthemum out of its place. Let's pop him back in. There we go. Okay. So my little lilac roses. I'm just going to do a little line of those. Just going around there. The status actually does look quite blue on the camera. Oh, does it? It is quite purple, isn't it? In reality, yeah, I would, I would definitely describe it as purple, not blue. Just goes to show, though, how different colours appear on on uh, different tablets or screens that you look at them on, doesn't it? Mm, absolutely. <clears throat> and colours are so subjective as well. I mean, one person's purple is another person's lilac is another person's mauve. <laughs> <laughs> and such a difficult thing to describe colour over the phone to somebody. Mm. Almost impossible, I would say. <laughs> so, just to reinforce this colour tone, I'm just going to add... I've got a tiny little gap here, so I'm just going to add some pieces in, of the status into there. Oops, not happy about going in there, are you? That bit. And then some more the other side as well. There we go. You said the status is quite a hardy flower. Yes, and it can be dried as well. So if, you, if you're in a position where you need to buy it for a particular event or for a specific item, you know, for something specific and you have to buy it in 25s and you only use sort of 10 or 15 stems, then you can always dry the other stems and then use them at a later date. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's again, it, it's quite a cost effective flower um, in the respect that you can use it for so many things. Right, so I've just cut some of my dyed jip off into little tiny pieces and just adding that around the roses. 
I have to say that Jip colour works perfectly with the carnations. It's almost exact colour tone. Almost as if I'm intended it, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just adding those around. Again, I've kept everything in, in sort of lines, almost. And then just finishing off the edges. So with the gypsum view that you are using, there is mm -hmm. this is a particular dyed, but you can get a natural pink, can't you? you? Yeah, you can get um, two different. You can get a natural pink. It does have more of a lilac colour tone, I would say. Would you? Mm -hmm. It's definitely yeah. not. It's definitely not this it's sort not of a vibrant pink. No, no, definitely not. And you can get a large head or a small head. You can get gypsophila my pink, and you can get pinkalino as well. Um, I think we've only got my pink available at the moment. Pinkalino, I think, comes in a little bit later on in the season. We have a question from Carol. We don't dye the flowers ourselves, um, so we can't offer you advice on dyeing flowers <laughs> as such. Um, it is um, something that we buy in for you, so we haven't particularly dyed it ourselves. No, the, we, we buy it pre-dyed from the markets in Holland, don't we? So we can't give you the trick, I'm afraid. No. And Holland don't like to give us the trick <laughs> either. <laughs> I don't blame them. No, exactly. Some things have to be kept secret and sacred. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, we, we get an incredible amount of dyed flowers available now don't we and so many different varieties and foliage some of the dyed foliage at Christmas is actually quite attractive mm. yeah it's very popular at Christmas time it is so just doing a repeat of the gypsophila on the other side Does, I would say um, the dye jip um, it does almost preserve it, doesn't it? Mm. So it does last, I think, a little bit longer. Um, I say not not everybody's cup of tea. It's one of those marmite things, really. You either I think you either love it or you hate mm. it, really, don't yeah. you? Well, we've had it last before for about two three weeks um, and still looking fresh. So yeah. um, you are right in the sense that it does preserve it. It does, yeah. <laughs> but you do find that the, for instance, on those stems, they have slightly discoloured the stems. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. I, I wouldn't say that matters. No, I don't, I don't know what I don't you think it does. It for. You tend to only need the head anyway, don't you? Absolutely. So, yep. Some more. <laughs> been joined by my colleague Sarah who's waving at us from the corner and she don't speak. We've got sign language. Hi Sarah. Hi. <laughs> and now she's running away. <laughs> she's got what she wants. So yeah just adding so added that gyps off so you've got that lovely curvature there. And then just to finish, I'm just going to finish up with some more pieces of my wonderful hydrangea, just to fill the little gaps in at the side. Then I think we're nearly there. Okay. And then just this side as well. Three and a half stems of hydrangea in this, so it's gone. Yeah, no, I didn't want to. Flowers come so low down, I didn't want to. Um, I 
offset anything. Now, <coughs> obviously, a butterfly is not a butterfly without its little antennae. So I've just made those out of some black aluminium wire. And I'm just going to pop those in. Better straighten them up, otherwise the poor thing's not going to fly straight. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Our butterfly. Perfect. Is it all right? Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching our little demo today. Um, something a little bit, although potentially it could be for a funeral tribute, but a little bit light-hearted, a bit summery. A, a, a welcome to summer, I think, really. Um, yes, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to share us with your friends and don't forget to like us. Still pose any questions that you have and we'll still be able to answer them. And uh, don't forget to visit our YouTube channel for more tips and hints. And look out for our month of June. Garden roses. God, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> our beautiful garden roses so we'll have lots of design ideas and information on garden roses sadly our sadly our month of may with the wonderful peonies is has gone <laughs> a good opportunity to give you perhaps a substitute for the peonies is the garden rose so look out for that in june all right have a fantastic weekend thank you once again for joining us and we'll see you next week bye for now <laughs>